Um, 15 years is a long time to be without releasing music. Was there any point in those 15 years where you thought you wouldn't be here today? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've, I had, you know, uh, problems with my voice for several years since uh, my last tour, which was Up, from the Up album. That was my last studio album. Um, and, uh, you know, I got Lyme's disease on that tour, right at the very end of that tour. And I started losing my voice and I didn't associate the two together. Lyme's disease is not typically something that attacks your voice. Um, it normally attacks your major organs. I mean, it's a terrible disease. It's, it's, a very, it's debilitating and um, can be fatal. So I'm not, um, I mean, I feel unfortunate as a, a vocalist that it attacked my vocal cords. Uh, but I feel grateful that it didn't attack my liver or, you know, my heart or something like that. So I, you have to see the positive side of everything. But it's been a long road back to, to recovery and back to rehabilitating my voice. And so I was, um, you know, now, this is why I'm calling the album. That's so much a part of, there's a lot of reasons why the album is called Now. But uh, who I am now is definitely not who I was uh, in many ways 15 years ago. And um, vocally is one of those things. You know, I've changed so much. I'm still myself, but I've changed. And that is a lyric on my album, in fact. But I had to go through a lot of rehabilitation to be able to record this album and to be able to get on stage and sing. So it's, a, it's quite a miracle that I've come this far with all of it. But so, the, yeah, the main reason why I've been away so long as far as having a full on. Um, you know, recording career uh, is because of my voice. And when music has given you so much, to have not the music taken away, but the voice, the, the tool, the instrument that you use taken away, it's such a cruel thing to happen. I mean, I, the, the irony of it is, is crazy. And I don't know what, you know, I'm not really still sure what the lesson was in that, but I have learned a lot through recovering my voice and I'm so appreciative and grateful. This album for me is, is, like, is, is, like, is a gift um, to listen back to myself. I've, I've never enjoyed listening to myself sing as much ever in my life as I do now. Um, in fact, I never listen to my own music normally, but I do enjoy listening to this record just for the sheer pleasure of, uh, you know, dwelling in this satisfaction that I was able to make the album. Um, it's been great. I mean, even making my demos was great. You know, sitting in front of my microphone and my Pro Tools with my guitar and just writing these songs and listening to my voice was a pleasure because for a long long time it was probably a good seven years before I even started to begin to get this you know to the bottom of what was going on with my voice and how to rehabilitate it so um, and I couldn't I couldn't bear to listen to myself sing um, it, it was an intermittent problem which was also very you know a big mystery because um, sometimes it would be there for a minute and then it would be gone again and I, I just didn't understand the inconsistency and why one minute I'd have control and the next min minute I wouldn't. Um, so uh, I was able to do a few vocal projects in that time during these last 15 years but it had to be a very controlled environment. I had to, and it just um, and they turned out really well you know, capturing that, that, a good moment in my voice, but there's no way that I could have, you know, started, restarted up my career again with that inconsistency in my voice. Um, you know, opening up my mouth and not knowing what sound was going to come out. Um, it's terrifying. It, it was terrifying. I grieved all of those years, really believing that I'd lost 
my ability to um, to have a singing career. You mentioned the word control in a different context, but it's interesting the opening track of the album, Swing With My Eyes Closed, mm -hmm. is, is that kind of freedom and emancipation, but also that fear of perhaps not having in the shape of Mark Lang, the person who guided those three albums, but yeah. actually still realising that you can do it without mm -hmm. any of that. It feels such a joyous opening to an album. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good point that you brought up. I mean, Swinging With My Eyes Closed is all about uh, diving into the unknown, uh, you know, fighting for uh, that freedom to express yourself over having to overcome the fear of the unknown and not knowing what to expect and what's around the next corner and you know uh, just diving into this project was the scariest part of the whole process um, just making the decision to get started without my longtime co-partner um, writing deciding to write the album on my own taking that challenge on of you know having no co-writer um, influencing me or even giving me objectivity, you know, uh, and perspective. It was a big risk and also um, putting my voice to the test. I didn't really know what, you know, how it was all going to turn out. Um, so swinging with my eyes closed, I've been doing that my whole life, by the way, anyway, swinging with my eyes closed. You but had to. I had to do that my whole life. But this, making this album was definitely one of those experiences. Um, for you, at those dark moments, with, there must have been points where you thought you probably couldn't cry anymore. You couldn't be more upset. So what lifted you out of those moments? I mean, there's a few things. I'm very lucky to have a beautiful son. Enjoy, I have yeah. an amazing husband, and I have music. And music has always been my go-to shoulder that doesn't judge, and um, it's a place I can go to uh, express without inhibition and vent. Um, and just being creative, period, is an expressive, you know, creative expression is, it's an outlet. It's a place to uh, release. And so in that sense, it's very therapeutic. It's my, you know, I guess songwriting, you could say, is my, my psychotherapy, and, and it really works. So uh, nothing better than to be a, a songwriter when you uh, need somewhere to go and, you know, pour your heart out. Um, everything that's gone on in your private life is well documented and you've spoke about it a lot. I was wondering when reading about it, whether you think success is an enemy of love. That the time that you have to pour into being who you were to the world takes away from being able to love in a much smaller, more intimate sense? Well, I've never, I, I've always been better at intimacy than I have at being in a, in a, in a you know, in, in a magnified environment. I get a little bit lost in that environment, to be honest. And in fact, when I'm on stage, as big as the environment has come, has become for me, um, being with thousands of people while I'm singing, I get in the mindset that I'm not the one in the spotlight, that I am there to be entertained by everyone else. And I flip it around and I don't feel on the spot at all. I feel very much a part of the environment like I'm at a party and we're all there together um, and this is the only way I feel comfortable doing it not not feeling like I'm in the spotlight and I'm very at home doing that um, I need the intimate I need to psychologically feel that I'm in an intimate setting no matter 
how big the environment basically is what I'm saying. And you know, I love I love having um, nesting time at home. I love um, time alone with my husband. I love time home, you know, time alone with my family and to cook and the small things in life really matter. So I have to take that same feeling with me on the stage, otherwise I would be overwhelmed. Have you forgiven? Yes, I have forgiven. Yes, you have to move on, and you have to. Um, you just have to move on and carry on, you know? How long um, did that take? A long time. <laughs> it took a long time. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things in my life that I've had to forgive, which we all do, you know, you know by the time uh, you get to your 50s. You, you've inevitably experienced things that, um, you know, that will hold you down or back unless you forgive and let go. Forgetting is impossible. I think in a lot of cases, but um, forgiving is necessary. You just have to um, unload and lighten, lighten your load, and not let let things drag you down. And and not forgiving drags you down, for sure. The tracks on the album that are very positive and overcoming um, the dark periods of your life. Are they a destination you're aiming towards? Are they a mantra you need to repeat in order to get you to that destination? Or are they where you are at now? Well, the other part of the reason why I've, I've named the album now is because this is, I'm, on, I'm through that transition. And I'm at the end of the transition and, and who I am now is, is someone who has arrived on the other side. And for a long time I was um, I was quite in the dark and um, in a phase where I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and then all of a sudden I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I gravitated there um, and the transition was longer than I expected but now I'm on the other side of it and it's, um, the album is, was written during the transition period. So um, there's the darkest moments. The, there are moments when I'm, when I'm, uh, you can sense the optimism, and then there's um, complete celebration of, of of getting through it and surviving. So the album is really the transition phase from dark to light. You know, sad to happy, lost to bound. Um, Life's about to get good is a perfect example, and how that. Of explaining and encapsulating in in three minutes the process of that of that transition phase. The, the one track I play on repeat and repeat is "Poor Me." <laughs> okay, and then that's the darkest You're moment. Right. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's, and I had to that's, include that right. song, okay. and that's why I included that song. And it's one of my favorite songs on the album "Poor Me." It's very infectious in a haunting way, and it's um, it really is that moment of you know self pity and i believe in indulging your you know indulging in the moment that you're in and if i'm sad i want to feel sad and i'm not going to apologize for it. and that's that's why i put that album on there i wanted that extreme uh which was where i was and have been in in various times in my life and it had to be included in this um this dark to light process and poor me is that song definitely, um, you know, an unapologetic uh, emotion and sentiment and experience that had to be shared on this album. Poor me another. Um, <laughs> and um, fun, clever. Yes. Twist to the lyric, which it, I always enjoy. There has, of course, been uh, many women who have been through similar experiences to you. What track do you think on this album? would best serve the woman in that moment who has been hurt by two people close to her? Yeah, I think I'm All Right is that song. Uh, I'm All Right is the, ch is the champion song for uh, anyone that, has, that, is, um, that needs to feel um, the optimism and the spirit of survival, either whether they're still in 
you know, this, this painful scenario or whether they're, they've come out on the other side. Um, so it's, it's a survivor's anthem for the brokenhearted and betrayed. So I would say that I'm alright is that song. With everything you've achieved, with all the success and the wealth, growing up in poverty as you did, do you ever quite escape the ghosts of that? Never. Uh, I, I will never forget where I came from and uh, what I experienced growing up poor um, in a very dysfunctional family, uh, violent home, um, and the, the, just the, uh, you know, the, the racial conflict I grew up in, um, just the whole thing was um, difficult and I would never want to relive it again but it was, I cherish the experience of growing up that way in the sense that I don't meet a lot of people, other people, who have. And I feel that I, um, that I have invaluable experience because of it. Um, but at the same time, you know, and, and I, it, it was terrible a lot of times, but I guess what I'm saying is I don't regret it because it's um, it's been invaluable, especially becoming famous in the end. I I really um, I really feel more anchored down, and especially because where I, where I come from and what I come from stays with me. And lastly, uh, if uh, your husband Frederick and I were to go out for a drink, what do you think would be the number one complaint he would have about you? <laughs> the number one complaint that he would have about me? Hmm, I guess it depends who he's talking to. But he would, his number one complaint about me is that, um, uh, there's <laughs> How long things. is this list, sure. I know, it is, it's, ter it's terrible, because he always tells me all the time the same things. Um, no, but he would, he would probably say that I'm too, uh, too forgiving. Um, and then the other thing is that he would probably say that I I don't uh, appreciate myself enough. He's a great husband. But I do need to hear these things a lot. Um, because, yes, I, I do have both those problems. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a pleasure.